The earliest recorded use of geometry was around 3000 BC in ancient Egypt, when each year the Nile would flood and wipe out all the property lines. Egyptian surveyors had to remeasure the land accurately using ropes and sticks. They would create 3-4-5 triangles using ropes for right angles thousands of years before Pythagoras did his A squared B squared thing. Level 1. Ancient Egyptian. If you're on this level, then I'm not angry with you, I'm just disappointed. These are the basics you learn as a child, how to find areas and perimeters of squares, triangles and maybe even circles. And you've used this equation at least once in your life. But if if I mention sine or cosine to you, you think that I'm probably talking about some kind of contract, and a tangent is when someone rambles on for longer than is necessary. Kind of like what I'm doing now. Level 2, middle schooler. At this level you'll learn how to use sine, cosine and tangent functions and how to use them when working with triangles. You'll also be forced to remember these 8 circle theorems off by fart. And as much as the teachers will try to convince you that this is still important and totally not a waste of time, you never hear anyone say, oh I'm so glad that I memorised those circle theorems when I was younger. Level 3, high schooler. Now this is where you start learning about this thing called a matrix. And if you're on the lower levels then you might think I'm talking about some Something really cool like breaking the fourth wall of mathematics and uncovering the hidden secrets of the universe like in the movie The Matrix. But in real life, a matrix is just a grid of numbers. Or a printer. But hey, you can print a matrix on a matrix. Now that's pretty cool. Matrices are useful in 3D graphics. For example, if you want to rotate something about the Y axis, then you take this matrix, multiply it by a position vector, and then you get the new coordinates of your rotated point. You can also build a literal neural network using simple matrix multiplication. Z equals WX plus B, where Z, W, X, and B are all matrices, is all you need to make a neural network in mathematics. Neural networks like today's sponsor, SEOwriting.ai. SEOwriting.ai makes it as easy to crank out SEO optimized content as it is to draw a 345 triangle. Maybe Pythagoras' theorem would have been more popular in his lifetime if he'd done some SEO. If you create content for a living, or even just as a hobby, instead of manually searching through all your competitors, Superpage scans the entire SERP for you. Extracting top ranking deadlines, CTAs, keyword densities, image layouts, and even ideal word counts. In just minutes, it will create a complete page blueprint which is SEO optimized and ready to publish. With the paid plan, you'll also get real-time SEO feedback, so as you're writing, the AI will make suggestions to fine-tune your content before it goes live. Or you can use the humanization tool to make your posts sound less robotic and more like it comes from a warm-blooded human soul, even though you haven't left the house for the last three months. Plans start at just $14 a month with full WordPress integration and support for 48 different languages. Head over to SEO Writing writing.ai link in the description to try the tool out for yourself for free and thank you SEO writing for sponsoring this video. Level 4 projectionist. If you've watched my videos on projecting 4D objects into the 3D world and then taking that 3D world projecting it into the 2D world in order to plot it in Desmos and you understood it then you're probably on this level. You basically just take all the knowledge you learned in level 3 from 3 dimensional linear algebra and then project that into 4 dimensions and as long as the math is mathing then you can project whatever you want. Although you can only ever see the shadow or cross section of a 4 dimensional object, not the actual thing. You'll also learn about how geometry behaves differently on different manifolds or surfaces. For example, if I walk 10,000 kilometers in a straight line then turn 90 degrees to the right and then walk another 10,000 kilometers in a straight line then turn 90 degrees again and walk another 10,000 kilometers in a straight line, I'll end up in the same place because on the earth I've just made a really big triangle. Level 5 Analyst. At this level you'll start learning about how to use calculus to solve geometry problems. You'll also be working in three dimensions, if you're lucky. But realistically your lectures will be in three dimensions but then the exam will be in like 10. But in some very niche subtopics of physics you can use these ideas of curvature, geodesics and surface theory for something useful. It's a shame you're a mathematician and therefore you're allergic to real world applications but hey it was just a suggestion. Level 6, topology. Now here's where things start getting a little bit weird. You might be comfortable working with curved surfaces or higher dimensions but what if space time itself is curved. I mean, if two objects are travelling through space, we all know they'll eventually meet due to gravity. But like, how? It's not like they've got Wi-Fi or mobile phones and they can just ring each other and go like, oh yeah, you're over there, pal. All right, I'll just sort of head in that general direction. Maybe it's the curvature of space-time which makes their paths meet. Like how on Earth, when two people are travelling in the same direction, their paths eventually meet due to the curvature of the Earth. Also, you've left your Euclidean shapes out in the sun for too long and they've all turned into these weird blobs that you can morph but you can't tear. 
topology reference. Level seven, maths legend. Congratulations, you got to the point where you're a researcher in maybe differential or algebraic geometry, and you're doing theoretical physics or string theory. Whenever you inevitably run out of money, you'll just solve a millennial prize problem, take the million dollars and then retire. Or if your name's Grigory Perelman, you'll just get bored one day, solve the problem, and then refuse to take the prize money because you just did it for fun anyway. And you don't want to break your nearly 20 year long mewing streak by talking to some silly journalist about how you solved it. Anyway, that's all for today. Like, comment, subscribe, and get lost.